Okay, so we have uh, listened to the welcomes uh, of our partners, uh, and I think that we can start the conference finally. <laughs> so I I would just have uh, Stefania Kipa and uh, Ilaria Duva uh, with me. We have been working to this uh, to this event uh, since uh, kind of a year ago. And uh, it has been changed during the, the organization. And at the end, it comes up as it is not right now. So by working in a museum so since more than 20 years, unfortunately, <laughs> um, I develop an idea of how actually new technologies can help museums in being contemporary, because uh, we have to deal with uh, a changing publics that are actually visiting our museums. So, considering that we are in Florence and all we, you are visiting in Florence is due to a very wise decision made many centuries ago by this lady who was the last heir of the Medici family. The Medici family ended without uh, uh, offsprings and she was the last one and she really wanted to leave what was belonging to the Medici family to the state of Tuscany in order to be enjoyed by the people and enjoy and you know attract to Florence uh, the tourist. So actually she was at the base of the first uh, uh, breath you know of the, con the idea of cultural heritage and for us uh, she's really very important. Yesterday was the day of, the, of her death and Florence devoted to her many, many uh, events. And I, I really like to remember her today because she is here, because she was part of this family. She was part of the people who actually wanted Florence as it is. So we are a kind of a part of her legacy and we want to uh, to keep up with what she was saying. And so, uh, you know, that time was a really important time because at that time, museums started to be open to the public. And again, I like to stress that uh, uh, women has played a really important role in museums, uh, uh, in museums uh, setting and museum management. Uh, you would be sorry, me, but I would like to stress that this conference uh, was organized by women. Nancy as the first, uh, and then me, Ilaria, and, uh, uh, and uh, Stefania just do you know, the first job. And then we had the Oak of Franco, who was actually helping us. But it is really very important to remember the role of women, you know, in building up our cultural heritage. <clears throat> so, what are the duties and responsibilities of a museum? Many would argue that conservation is one of our main duty, and it is true. Museums conserve and protect their collection for their audience, but of course, of course, for their audience and for future generations. And museums actually do more than that. It is essential not only to communicate with our audience, but as well as capture their imagination. And now even more, you know, it's more and more important to be in, in, uh, in, uh, we, to be permeable with this, uh, with this different attitude of our, of our public. So this is going to become even more difficult when we think about our audience and how we currently communicate with them. In the majority of museums, 
information is communicated with a short display and, uh, you know, with the usual basic information. Uh, perhaps uh, a visitor can have an audio guide or a leaflet. Um, uh, nowadays, uh, visitors want to go beyond. They ask for something more and uh, they want further information, okay? So our audience are becoming far more diverse and we see it in Florence uh, with 12 million people visiting the city. And if we try to communicate in the same way as we were used, someone from other culture maybe cannot be really getting the, the, the meaning of why they are visiting these kind of museums and this kind of heritage. So our, our history, it becomes a lot less effective, but we want to have effective, we have to be effective to our, to our audience. So I think that we must find a way to connect with these people, with these different people who is asking for different things through our own history and by creating connection, connecting culture, you know, with other cultural provenience and cultural references and cultural backgrounds. So the next challenge we face come from the emergence of the new generation, very different from their parents' and grandparents' generation. To tackle these, we must first analyze the ways in which each generation learns and how they interact with museums. Baby boomers born just, just after the war uh, and their children, Generation X, were brought, to learn, brought up to le uh, learning uh, by road. Many of us has this kind of background. They are used to reading and learning with very little interaction needed to satisfy them. Though both witnessed the emergence of new technologies, such as a satellite television, video games, smartphones, and so on, and they may have not um, started using new, new technologies, or anyway, they are not as comfortable with new technologies as new generations. Our current museums are, were built by this kind of generation and for this kind of generation, since they are, you know, the common audience of museums of nowadays and museums in the past. Next generation are known generation Y and Z, in general, okay? Generation Y is the one uh, born between mid-70s and mid-90s. And this is the larger generation after the baby boomers. This generation is really sophisticated, technologically wise, and uh, they saw uh, leaps in technological development. So uh, they have a, a different skillness uh, considering their predecessors. Mm. Generation Y are actually fathers and mothers and some, sometimes grandfathers of the new generation which are much more um, technologically advanced, which is Z generation. And so we are actually working for this generation and for the kind of generation that are coming uh, later on. So Generation Z is the most technologically advanced generation so far. And they are truly the first digital generation being always connected. They are used to be connected while in a museum it is not so easy to be connected. <coughs> These native digitals are completely comfortable and even reliant on technology. They have information constantly at their fingertips and have many different ways of searching for the want. Studies show that uh, <coughs> this generation is far more likely to adopt new technology 
early on, and they are much more likely to expect new digital approaches and interactivity while they are learning. All these generations are our current audiences, and we must learn to cater for their needs. So we have to be in balance with this kind of, uh, of um, public. The last generation, the one who is actually growing up uh, uh, now, are the, the so-called Generation Alpha. And uh, it, is, uh, it is thought that this generation will be the most technologically advanced of all. And, uh, you know, better, supposedly better educated than us. So more demanding when they are visiting our museums. So contemporary museology should have them in mind when designing new exhibitions and new museums. We must cater for all of this generation because they are all our public. Uh, but if we want to maintain the importance and the significance of museums in our society and in our posterity, we must learn to adapt for the future. We must engage the enthusiasm of the public and interact with them on many new levels. It is clear that the next generation of museums must make technology part of their DNA. If we want to both engage this future generation as well as the million of foreign, foreign visitors that visit our museums every year, we must adapt. Using new technologies, um, you, you can think of whatsoever you want, um, this task became a lot easier to complete. Through these methods, we can explain difficult contents, concepts through the cons to the content, context of different cultures. We have to deal with different cultures and with different backgrounds, and it is not just only a question of translating it into different idioms. It's the mind setting that we have to catch in order to be compelling with our duty. We can use interactive storytelling to connect with stories and reference of these visitors and so make their experience far more fulfilling and informative. So while we are still having the Elettrice Palatina on my back, we can connect with the younger generation. We actually have to connect with a younger generation by integrating this technology alongside the traditional methods of communication. Is not O O, is E E. Um, these new audiences are more discerning and more demanding. They crave more information and want to receive this information in different ways. They also will be used to receiving a lot of information immediately and to interactive learning. So these should, should, be, should enter in our DNA when we are designing a museum. This is where technology will be of use. We can open up new words to these audiences and supply them with extra layer of engagement. The legacy of what Anna Maria de' Medici left us is secured for future generations if museums are moving, adapting towards this new deal. Thank you. So I, I put thanks on, on my last slide, but uh, it comes really from the heart because these people help us. So, not very much. Okay. Uh, now is the time. Sorry. Now is the time for our Ministry of Culture guest, 
I would like to introduce you Dr. Uh, uh, Kaffa, who is actually, Rossella Kaffa, who is actually presenting what the Ministry of Culture in Italia has doing, you know, uh, regarding these issues. Mm -hmm.